Stephen Kearney will be leading the Haka. The two captains meeting the officials. Russell Smith from Castlefoot in the UK is wearing the Celtic star today. He'll control both test matches. Anthony Rich says, you know, after effects after a concussion suffered a fortnight ago in Australia, they're fit and well. The hark are about to happen. Cummins standing in a semicircle as well. with their reply. I think Brent that they were saying, go on, let's rumble. Wow, pretty impressive, wasn't it? Wow, that was great. Not as good as the Harker though, Greg, is it? Russell Smith from the UK in control. It will be Elias Pio with the kickoff. No Adrian Lamb in the PNG team. Today, we can expect him to make his appearance on New Zealand soil next Friday in Palmerston North, along with David Wesley, the Canberra Raider. Failed a fitness test today. So the Kummels without a couple of their stars. Matthew Rich is ready. five test matches on two sports action great to have you with us for our live coverage today and quentin pongia takes it up the turn of the football about 25 meters out from the new zealand line now this is grant young his first touch in test football and it's early on that the png forwards will try and show some authority out there so i think new zealand will try and run wide they won't be trying to go and bust them because as i said they're very strong up the middle png that was a great tackle by Robert Teller, the centre on Tony Iro, and I know they're very worried about Iro and also this man, Stephen Kearney, about eight from the halfway. Now it is Mark Horro. Kurt Sherlock is also with us on the two sports action team today. Pretty good conditions out there despite the shower, Kurt. And that kick finds touch. Ten out from the Kumuls line. So a good opening set by the Kiwis. Yes, it is a good opening set, and um, that's what they need to do is work the ball out well, work the ball out well, and get a good kick in. And we saw Matthew Ridge do it in the, in the grand final. I'm sure his kicking game will be very important out there today. So Papua New Guinea and Stanley Guinea loses the football. And there's a knock on in there, so a bad mistake by the Kumuls. Yes, and it's those little mistakes they can't do early, early on. They've got to hold on to the ball, complete their sets of back six. Up, up. Get some good yardage early on. Well, the feet into the scrum went to the Kumuls, and so now they have another opportunity to work it out of their own red zone. Kiwis will be pretty keen to keep them pinned down here. Max Terry plays it back to Apio. This is the front row of Ben Beery. Driven back by the Kiwis. One thing you'll see also at the Papua New Guinea is they're not scared to throw the ball around in their own 22. But that's a bad mistake once again. And it was their skipper, Bruce Bermando. He'll be disappointed with that one. So another scrum to pack down. Only about 17 or 18 metres out from the Kumuls line. Stacey Jones to feed the scrum. 
the Kiwis in a great attacking position at the moment chance here for New Zealand turning the ball on the inside to John Timu Ridges at dummy half they work it to the blind side Horro Horro straight ahead to the 10 meter mark real pressure on the Kumbles line now big line up out to the left it goes through Damu Jones Jones over to Pongia they keep it alive scrappy pass has been picked up over there by Richie Barnett he has to cut infield and Grant Young waits for it at dummy half now it's Iro, it's Kearney, in fact, the other second rower. The big man on the 10 metre mark still tackles up their sleeve at the moment. Stacey Jones, Namu, Iro, Tony Iro. Beautiful ball to John Timu. Final tackle coming up, only five metres out. Hobby at dummy half. Ridge wants it. Will they go to the air? No, they put it through the hands and now Namu kicks over for the flying Richard Barnett. The bouncer's going to favour Barnett. That's a false try. Yes, great work though from Stacey Jones and also Gene Nabu. Let's have a look again on the CRC replay. Obviously the communication had gone out. I thought Matthew Rich might have been overweighted it just a little bit, but Richie Barnett knew exactly what was happening. And it's out wide really where you're going to catch PNG because they play a compressed defence and they don't slide that well. But Gene Nabu, he had a look out wide. Richie Barnett was waving his hands. Of course it was always on. Beautiful little bounce, a little bit of luck involved too because the ball can bounce the wrong way, but Richie Barnett was there. And that's a good start for the Kiwis. Barnett in his third test, one of the stars of the World Cup last year. So a promising start to the Kiwis. Four points to nil. And they'll be very disappointed with that start. It all came from that mistake by Bruce Momendo inside their own red zone. Difficult conversion attempt for Matthew Ridge, although I guess <laughs> there is no such thing as a difficult no. conversion attempt for someone like him. He can kick them over from anywhere. Uh, this is not a difficult one for him. Just a metre or two inside the far touch. It's away this time. No goal. We put the mocker on him well and truly. Four points to nil. New Zealand over Papua New Guinea. Just the one try, four points to nil on the first tackle in this set of six. For the Kumbles, remember, we're playing under Super League rules, so the team that scores the points kicks off. That's a good rule too, because um, sometimes teams can score and get a roll on because they get the ball again, but at least it gives PNG another chance here. But they've just got to settle down and work it out of their own 22. Do the hard stuff early, drop a couple of balls early on, maybe a little bit of nerves. So Papua New Guinea now, 28 metres out from their own line. Looking for the runners. They find Raymond Carl. Plenty of speed out wide, but we haven't seen them put it through the hands yet. Mark Mum gets the kick in on the final tackle. Straight into the arms of Bridge. 30 metre mark. Not a great chase by the Kumbles. Bridge is only eight metres from halfway now. Yeah, he brought the ball back well, Matthew, but... As you said, the Kumbles was a good kick, but their chase was just non-existent. And really, it's no good if you put in a good kick and the chase is not there. Penalty goes to New Zealand. The Kumbles well and truly inside the 10. Oh boy. Oh boy. Hey, hey. This is a very confident start from the New Zealand side. Working the ball up. They'll be working their way for a move. Rod Young, 19 out from the line. New Zealand applying the pressure again and Kearney puts it down this time and it's been picked up by Elias Pio. The Kumbles, the task of trying to give themselves better field position. It's a rare mistake by Stephen Kearney. Yeah, very, very good hands, but um, he just took his eye off the ball a little bit. The pass wasn't too bad from Quinton. And Clarkie, probably the difference between the two sides today will be in the territory and the ability of Papua New Guinea to make their way out of their own 22. Probably won't have as strong a kicking game as New Zealand will with Matthew Ridge. Well, Kurt, here's a chance for the Kumbles to get out of their own half with this penalty, holding down in the tackle. 
And the thing about the, the PNG side is that they get a little sniff and they make the odd break, they'll back up and they get very excited. They play a lot like Fiji rugby. They're prepared to throw the ball around. They'll throw it between their legs, over their heads. They'll try anything. And it's very, very entertaining. Here's the penalty on the CRC replay. He was just going on with it. 10 metres inside New Zealand Territory. Raymond Carl. Pio waits for the dummy half. Now it's Beery. Good defence though by Young and also Kearney. Mum. Switch of play. Working it down to the blind and Mando is driven back. That's a big tackle again by Young. Fine start on his debut. Nandy Year. Yeah, let's just have a look at Grant Young there. Beautiful tackle in low, driving back. Marcus by kicked it straight into the legs of one of the Kiwis, so it doesn't go back to one. Now it's a final tackle. Mark Bum puts it on the ground. This is where that dangerous Rich. Cleaning up just in time, Matthew Rich. Robert Teller was flying through. They've got some speed out wide. Well, they're prepared to try things. That was a great little chip kick through. Now watch Matthew Roots come across here and cover. If he was not there, that was a certain try. Good way from PNG. And good clean up by Ridge as well at the back. The first real pressure applied by the Kermals. And that's interesting, Brent, because it was her first attacking opportunity, really. And the first time, yes, in the, in the Kiwis 22. But... You know, they're prepared to try things, although it was the fifth tackle, so the Kiwis sort of knew what was happening. Matthew would have been expecting it. So there's good someone like Matthew there who was able to clean up like that. He is a very confident player, and under pressure, uh, it brings out the best in him. Max Terry. High eye dummy half. Yeah. Ducked under a high tackle. Quentin Pong here. It's going to be issued a warning by Russell Smith here. He well, didn't connect, but maybe the intent was there. That's the word from Smith. Let's have a look at the CRC replay. Well, he was going down. I think Quinton was coming, and there was a bit of a swinging arm there, but the Papua New Guinea player was going down. Let's just have another look on the CRC replay here. Just watch Quinton go. He's going up for a tackle. Well, there was a swinging arm. Fair enough call from the ref. So now the Kumuls have a shot at goal to try and get some points on the board Kiwis lead by four points to nil this is Robert Teller who was injured 20 minutes into the test match against Great Britain and lay last weekend and without their first choice goal kicker on the park they didn't have a great day with the boot and subsequently lost by two points yes and it's very important at this day to, to have a, a good, good goal kicker Kiwis are so lucky having Matthew Ridge Phil Leishman, bit of a good start by New Zealand, but chance here for the Kummels. Yes, it's good to see that. I tell you what, this weather's a remarkable down here in Rattara. It's cleared again, so it's looking <laughs> reasonably good. I'm hoping it's going to be a bit brighter for the rest of the game. Certainly plenty of colour here, and I uh, suspect that we're going to get uh, a pretty good game. Sports action live at the Rotorua International Stadium. Two-point ball game. That will give the Kumuls a little bit of confidence now. Now it's Young. He loves returning the football. Former South Queensland crusher. New signing for the Warriors. Yes, and he's six foot six, I think it is. He's a big lad. But I think this 20 minutes, well, the first 20 minutes, I always, and I'm sure the Kiwis knew, and Frank Innicott, the coach, that the Papua Guineas would be competitive. But they'll start to drop off tackles. After that, and I'm sure you'll see the Kiwis maybe run away off this one. Not surprisingly, the Kiwis are using Tony Iro out wide, making up with Richie Blackmore and Sean Hoppy. Now it's Kearney, about eight metres inside PNG territory. Now it's Pongia to Jones, Namu. They've got Iro out there, overlap over on the far side, Timu. 
shows it infield to Barnett. Richie Barnett on the 20 meter mark. So from one Help side of the field Help to the Help other, they're putting it through the hands of Kiwis. They lead by two, just one try to none. Now from dummy half, it's the skipper Rich kicking into the in goal area. But back there is Robert Seo, and that's a great tackle. Good tackle by Richie Barnett. He drove him back into the in goal, and so it will be a goal mouth dropout. I thought CO was going to get in the back end of the field of play. I think he thought it as well. Well, the CRC replay will show that he had plenty of room and was in the field of play, but that's a crunching tackle there from Barnett. Good work. And that's disciplined uh, stuff from the Kiwi side. Taking the option to put the kick in. They really didn't, uh, didn't need to put the kick in, but it's given them an extra set of six and that kind of football. I think well, that'll give them the possession that they need. I think that what the Kiwis will do is they'll move, try and move the, the PNG side around. And I think how wide is really the Kiwis, all their strike power is. I think you know, they'll mash them for a while on the forwards. Well, that's a great, dunk from, a great run from Craig Young. But out wide is where they're going to score the tries today. Now it's Hero from Dummy Half. Sidero right in front of the uprights, only about 12 metres out. Good run by the hooker. Jones turns it on the inside to Pongia. Pongia takes him on, pops it out to Jones. Jones needed to get it out to the left. That's where the numbers were. Now they go to the right, and Ridge tries to step his way through. Eight metres out from the line. Pressure for the Kumuls yet again. Now it's Jones to Namu. Namu, the overhead pass to nobody. Into touch. One of those things you can practice at training with no one in front of you, but it just didn't go to hands there. Well, they should have maybe used the numbers there, Gene. It was, it was on out wide. They had the numbers against PNG. I think it was about a three on two, three on one. But after you get into their credit, they're sliding well on defence. Territory, New Zealand, dominating by 10%. Possession, going far for New Guinea's way, but I think it's been at the wrong end of the field for them. I think New Zealand too, uh, we talked about a lot of these players haven't played for quite some time. And, you know, they'll be just trying to get their timing together, first time out there as a team. And it always takes one or two games. And the Kumuls have had a recent test match. The Kiwis, many of them haven't played since the last round of the Optus Cup, sitting out the quarterfinals and semis. switch of play but from a standing start they weren't going to make too much ground on that occasion Raymond Carl now it's Mom Momando the skipper has taken on his 30 meter mark haven't seen too much flair from the backs yet but this time they attempt to put it through the hands and now they throw it into touch so a couple of uh, pretty ordinary passes from both sides that was a pretty good uh, defensive set of six from the New Zealand side. They are moving up very quickly, holding a good line, putting a lot of pressure. And Stacey Jones moving up on the kicker very quickly. Now this is another good run by Grant Young. He's been impressive so far. He's about nine metres out from the line. Kearney, Stephen Kearney, the big man is getting very close. He tried to <laughs> get across the line. He thought get away with that one but Russell Smith was right on the spot and no try it's a penalty for a double movement yeah, let's just have a look on the CRC replay there I don't know was it a double movement let's have a look Steve kearney has got two or three players with him he's a very powerful player now does he slide over no that's a double movement good call from the ref Mistake by the Colonels, not finding touch, and now it's Hoppy. They've got numbers on the far side. Hoppy took the tackle, though. He's only about nine metres out from the line. Iro at dummy half. There's Namu, the double round with Iro. He needs support, and they cough up the football. So this is pretty scrappy stuff. I think the Kiwis really just need to take stock and settle down a bit. Well, I suppose they're trying things, and really... When Tony Iroh takes the ball up, as we'll have a look here on the CRC replay, he needs somebody running off him because he always pops the ball up and he'll put someone through the gap. Um, so they've got to back Tony up. Still finding their feet a little bit, but I'm still being very impressed with the Kiwi side. Now it's the Kimmels. One thing about the PNG side is you cannot relax even though they are down in their own red zone. And of course, Bob Bennett, their coach, he's a very smart coach and um, he would have been joining them about little things like handling errors as, as we have a look there New Zealand 3-2 and you know possession and completing your sets of six and all those little things I'm sure he's been concentrating on and they're, they're doing it quite well the, the Papua New Guineans 
is Stanley Getty, one of their trump cards on attack. He hasn't had too many opportunities today. So far, still plenty of time to go, though. The first test. Tayo to Mom. Through the hands. That was his teller. Robert Teller. Trying to get on the outside. Taken by Richie Barnett. And that is the handover. So they ran it on the final tackle. It didn't come off for them. Penalty now. And the Kumals. No discipline there. It's going on with that push and shove act. And Rich kicking for touch. Place kick and he finds touch. 22 metres out from the Kumals line. Four points to two. Grant Young. Only 10 metres out now. Eru waits for it. Here's Pongia. Quentin Pongia. Jones. Stacey Jones pops it inside to Hoppy. Hoppy got the fin going. Got away from one out to Jones. Good tackle though by Denny. Now it is Namu. Namu. Long ball to Ridge. Over the top it goes. Timu. About 18 metres out. Good defence by the Kumals. But can the Kiwis crack them in this set? Now it's Iro, Tony Iro. Settling run. Namu wants it down the left side. Out it goes now. But again, the Kumal scrambling has been quite impressive. Barnett couldn't find a way through. There's the kick by Namu right across field. And it's almost uh, in line with uh, where he kicked it from. And that's a knock on there by Jones. So the execution on the final tackle, not a good one. Well, I think this, the, the defense of the Papua New Guineans has been outstanding. They're getting in the passing lanes and they're just really scrambling out there and running and, 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 and chasing hard. And um, if, if a New Zealander gets past them, they run across, they don't give up. Um, and they're sort of getting in the road a little bit of the Kiwis. And maybe it might be frustrating them a little bit. But once they settle down, I think that and once they break the line because Papua New Guinea when they've got a sniff of a victory when, when they're in the game they play so competitively and, and um, you know they're very hard but if, if the New Zealand side just score one or two tries then uh, you know they really drop off the, the PNG side yeah, Brent one thing I have noticed with the Papua New Guinea defence a couple of their defenders uh, two and three out are running up out of the line very quickly and they're, they are leaving holes I uh, wouldn't mind betting Gene might start drifting across looking for some inside runners because there are some holes there. Now, the kick. Midfield bomb by Stanley Genny, but Ridge takes it on his 20-meter mark. Genny is the only chaser there. Again, the chase is not good by the Kerbals. Now Ridge runs into them. They try and drive him back. The referee says hell. Timu. Line breaks. New Zealand 2, Papua New Guinea 1 now. Hoppy tries to get on the outside of them over the halfway line he goes that's a good run from Sean Hoppy well done trying to get up for the quick play of the ball Papua Guinea all over him but gee I'll be very impressed with Sean he's been involved early on in this game and he's certainly getting, getting the better of his winger so the penalty goes to New Zealand and Ridge will kick for this grandstand or our broadcast touch Yes, I think if you fight to get up for the quick play of the ball, nine times out of ten, you'll get a penalty. Sean Hoppy certainly did that. PNG just going on with it. Now another opportunity for New Zealand. They've had pretty good field position. It's the one try in the match so far. Will they finish it off this time? Namu holding it up, having a run on his own, throwing the dummy, and they've been pinged for a, for a shepherd. Russell Smith says you can't do that. So another wasted opportunity there by the uh, New Zealanders. Always difficult for a player, isn't it? Because sometimes your teammates uh, don't quite think the way you're thinking and <laughs> get in front of you. Well, it's sometimes it's a little bit hard, but that's where you've got to communicate. And I'm sure it was a planned move there, hitting back the blind side, because Papua New Guinea sometimes get a little bit lazy on the blind side, and that's where New Zealand will try and exploit them. Let's just have a look here on the CRC replay there. Gene's drifting across, and the defence is holding. He did run across two players, and the, there was a definite shepherd, but heavy tackle there, two on Gene. Now Papua New Guinea are on their 30-metre mark. So no sign of any 
impossible stampede by the Kiwi so far. Very creditable performance by the Kumbles in the opening test. They've had 23 minutes on two sports action. Yeah, that's the kind of ben start Berry. that uh, with the Kumbles just staying in there, 4-2. If they just get a bit of the run of play, a, a sniff of a try, uh, anything can happen. Yeah, so it all comes down to class though, Kurt. I don't think the Papua New Guineans have got the class of the Kiwis out there. And, uh, you know, the Kiwis are, are still finding their form as that they're all pretty new. Match fitness is a big thing too. The Papua New Guinea are playing pretty quick, aren't they? They're, they're shifty little characters. They seem to be able to sneak through things and try and do things at, at 100 miles an hour. Now it's Mark Bum, the halfback with the kick. And Barnett is sent back there. A couple of chases ready to set upon him. That's a good return by Barnett. 28 out from his own line. Now it's Hoppy getting involved again. 10 from halfway. Centre field. Grant Young. Sid has had a pretty quiet game as well, Brent. Uh, like to see him have a bit of a dart. Here he goes. Yeah. Plenty of yards usually for Sid 30 metre mark. Now they put it out along the back line. And again, it's Tony Iro storming onto it. Trying to free the hands, but they wrapped him up, ball and all. And it's a penalty. The referee played a long advantage there. That's what Kurt was talking about. They're rushing up off their defensive line. Quick tap taken by Matthew Ridge, 10 metres out. We've seen the Kiwis in this position on many occasions in the first half. They've only scored the one try now. It's Kearney. Kearney held up, ball and all, five metres out. At dummy half, it's Arrow having a go at his own, and he's across. It's a try to Sid Arrow. to two New Zealand over Papua New Guinea that's two tries yes put that one down to Steve Kearney too nice quick play of the balls as the CRC replay will show hookers love getting in there and getting quick play of the balls caught the defense napping if you just have a look at the Papua New Guinea defense the two markers there's just nobody there Sidhu who saw that his vision from dummy half is very good he saw it and went over for a great try well Sidhu is playing his seventh test match and uh, Kurt, that will please you. You predicted it. Yeah, just on the spot. But uh, yeah, he's a very good player, said Eru. He's got good pace. Be one of the quickest hookers around. And um, I'm sure there'll be plenty of yards out there for him today as the Papua New, New Guineans probably slow down in defence a little bit. Be plenty of yards around dummy half. Yes. So that's the distance and the angle for Matthew Ridge. And I think hookers love their pawns going forward. Getting those quick play of the balls too, it helps them. They get in there and have a look around. If they see that gap, they're gone. Just his first conversion attempt. This is much easier. It's there. Ten points to two. The Kiwis over the Kumbles. Two sports action, an eight-point ball game. The Kiwis over the Kumbles. And Ridge with the restart. This time they try a short restart. Picked up by Tony Oro. The big man charging for the line. New Zealanders, the Kerbals caught Daffy from the kickoff that time. Now it's Jones. Jones to Blackmore. Blackmore tried to pop it over the top to Hoppy, and they've knocked it on. But what a run, Tony Iro! <laughs> wow, hasn't Matthew Ridge got some skills? Uh, he placed that ball nice and high. It was a planned move. Tony Iro knew exactly what was happening. The Kerbals didn't know what was happening. He took it. Now I thought Tony was going to go all the way here. He's a big guy. <laughs> Took some runners with him. They just couldn't go on with it, though, the Kiwis. But it's little things like that that can turn a game. And great stuff from the from the Kiwi side. But they coughed up the football. And I guess Frank Endicott won't be too happy with that. He would have been pleased that the planned move came off. They really should have gone on with it. Played out their set, at least. First change for the Kumuls. Uh, Greg James Cops is off. And Obert Bartia is on the field. Look for him, number 17. Bartia scored a try against the Line Red Cup 13 on Tuesday night. And territory 70% to 30. It's all New Zealand now. They're leading on the scoreboard 10 points to 2. This is Nandy Yur. Pio waits for the dummy half to mum. The halfback's been pretty quiet. Big shoes to fill today for Mark Mom, the halfback, filling in for Adrian Lamb. He's playing for another PNG outfit that's taking on the Kangaroos. <laughs> well, that's the third time the Papua New Guineans have uh, turned over the ball on the fifth tackle. 
They really seem to have their kicking game sorted out. Surprises me that, uh, Kurt, because that's one of their strengths, the kick over the top, and they've got plenty of pace. Yes, as a Cardinal said, really, you must kick on the last or even on the fourth or fifth tackle. They're just not doing it. it makes it so much easier. Timu! For a moment, it looked as if he was going to find the gaps. Good run by the centre. He's 10 out from the line. Big line up out to uh, the right. But Kearney takes him on. Arrow. Down the blind they go. Said Arrow looking for a double. <laughs> He's pulled out only about a half a metre out. Final tackle on the way. Namu. Long ball out to Jones. Jones, another long ball to Ridge. Ridge will put it on the ground. Turning the Kumbles around and they are trapped in the in-goal area. Well, it took a while to get the kick in, in the end. And it pretty well paid off for them. If you're going to kick with the grubber kick, you really have to try and pin them in the in-goal. And, and New Zealand really trying to push the ball out wide, isn't it? Matthew Rich, great kick in goal. And backed up well by the Kiwis. And the Kumbles are going to find themselves with a lot of pressure on them now. And that's really the difference. The two teams, the three players that touched the ball then for the Kiwi side, they were all in positions and could have kicked if they wanted to. Plenty of options in this Kiwi side. Now this is Grant Young. Barnett. The dummy from Pongia. He looked to pass but took the tackle. His Canberra teammate Bruce Momando tackled him. Now it's Jones. Inside to Kearney. Kearney. Almost through the gap. No marker. Play on. Now he plays it. Now there's a penalty. Again, a mistake by the New Zealanders in a very good attacking position. He was in two minds then. Yeah, just stepped off the mark to play it, Stephen, there. But have a look on the CRC replay. He's tackled now. You can't move forward to play the ball. There he goes. He goes to play the ball. Well, no marker. <laughs> wow, a bit of confusion there. He stopped and then played it. And that's what the penalty was for. But I must say, I'm very impressed with the, with the Kiwi front row. Young and Pongia, they're working so well together. Grant Young, I'd like to know how many times he's taken the ball up and Pongia seems to follow him. And if the fours can set up a good platform like that, then the halfbacks and the backs will fire. It's not like you do. Keep an eye on the front rowers. <laughs> you think you still own that number eight and number ten jersey? A little bit biased, and I think they're doing a great job out there, the New Zealand side. Three metres from halfway. The Kumbles down by eight points in the first test. 31 minutes gone. This is a fullback with a bit of space. Robert Seo can't get past the last line of defence. That was Ridge. First half chance really for the Kumbles. And this is the last tackle. Let's see if they kick it. Well, the front rower's got it. No, back it goes to the winger. That's David Gomia. And now it's out to Pio. Pio getting out of a couple of tackles. Elias Pio. Pass out wide. Co is up from fullback. Mom. On to Teller. Back in field it goes. And the movement stops from one side of the field to the other. Eventually, the tackle was made on the 20-metre mark. Well, I'm sure the instructions must go out to their players from, from uh, Bob Bennett, the Papua New Guinea coach, that they must kick it and put some pressure on the player bring the ball out. That was excellent defence from the New Zealand side. Uh, backwards and forwards across the field. Here's a mistake, a turnover, but the defence has been very good. Shadowed the Papua New Guinea players the whole way. No danger in the, in the whole movement. Sean Hoppy, the ball just being ripped out of his arms there. Oh, David Gomez has been crunched by the juggernaut, Grant Young. <laughs> now it's Mom. Standing flat footed to Stanley Ganny. Back to Mom. Memendo. Back to Mom again. Pio. They're not getting over the advantage line, the Kerbals. Pretty easy pickings for this New Zealand defence at the moment. New Zealand giving them pretty good field position through the mistakes. Now it's Pio. They're kicking on the early tackle count. And there was a chance over on the far side. Barnett got a bad bounce. But it beat everybody into touch in the end. Well, the message is obviously going out there to try those little kicks because that's how they can break the New Zealand line. Nice little kick in here. Waited well. The communication was done. Everybody backed up, but... Just couldn't finish it. And it might be a Kumal feed into the scrum, I think. Came off the hands of Barnett. 
change coming up over on the far side too, Phil. Yes, I'm um, just trying to pick that up. I think it's uh, Richie Blackmore, is it? No, Sidera is coming up for a break. So uh, Joe Vagano will get the call and he'll be on very shortly. So a rearranged scrum here. Mark Horro moves into the hooking position. Tony Iro having a spell as well. And Vangana has been sent back and Ruben Wiki comes on and Wiki's going to pack down on the forward. So he's showing his versatility. The Canberra centre playing at lock forward at the moment. But it's the Kumuls with the feet into the scrum. Ganny, CO, out to buy. And they put it into touch on the first tackle. Well, Bob Bennett won't be happy with that, the PNG coach. When they get into a scoring position like that, they really should go on with it. So both sides having problems with the execution, really. Yes, the Papua New Guinea side just, they're doing the same as the Kiwis, trying to spin it out wide because that's where they believe the gaps are. Just Another don't... change for the Kumuls to Gomia is off and uh, Kipsy on, number 15 on for Papua New Guinea. And Kipsy is a flyer. Give him a bit of space and it's all over. Now it is the New Zealanders. They've been pinned down in their own territory for quite some time. First touch of the ball now for Ruben Wiki, his eighth test match. Grant Young. Well, he's having a field day out there, Grant Young, on his uh, debut, isn't he? He's playing very well, taking the ball up. He's been involved with some crunchy tackles, and there's his other partner, Quinton Pomia. They're working very well together. And Horo is a dummy half with Eru having a spell on the interchange bench. Now it's Ridge. Ridge with the grubber kick. The crowd appealing for a penalty there as Ridge hit the deck, but the uh, Kumul stood his ground, and that's legal. Tyron Smith is on there as well, making his test debut, Tyron Smith. Pio. Out to Mamando. He's eight metres from halfway. So a great pass from the dummy half position bump to Jenny and he is standing flat footed can't get away from Namu and also in there is Kearney they are very strong up up top the puck New Guinea so they can offload I mean if you're going for the tackle if you don't wrap them up first time they seem to wriggle around and be able to get the ball away well that's a great tackle from Ruben Wiki Marcus by he's got to try against the uh, Kiwis at the World Cup last year let's see if they kick it again fifth tackle coming up Raymond Carl plays it back to Pio. Now it's Mark Bum. And a good bounce for Ridge. Inside his own 20. Out to Barnett. Barnett. Great return of the football by Richie Barnett. So elusive, isn't he? 10 from halfway. Penalty. Trying to go up and play the ball quickly. And he got the penalty. And the support from Matthew Ridge at the back has been pretty good from both wingers today. Both uh, Sean Hoppy and Barnett having fine games. Well, he gives them good service, doesn't he, Matthew? And he's a very smart player. Of course, Richie Barnett, if you fight, once again, to get up, the referee's already shown he's going to give you penalties, and that's good work. But PNG really making bad mistakes. Now it's Jones. Kearney. 22 metres out. Opportunity here again for the Kiwis. It's Namu holding it up. Out to Smith. Tyron Smith charging straight ahead, trying to burst his way through the tackles. Three of them are there to put him to ground. Horo at dummy half. Out now to nobody. Not a great pass. The bounce was good for Pongia. He says, I'll have a go on my own. Pongia got one out the back door. Quick hands are needed here. Over the top it goes. It's three on one. Over to Timu. He cuts in field. John Timu for the line. Try! Yes, great work from the Kiwis. Put that one down to Quinton Pongia there. Beautiful pass. He had some traffic on him, some players on him. He slipped a nice little pass. Let's have a look here on the CRC replay. We've just missed that pass, but was able to go on. Stacey Jones saw out wide. Now, this pass from Matthew Ridge had been a little bit forward. Well, I'd say a line ball, but great work from John Timmy. He's so elusive around the rucks, around the uh, outside there and close to the line. Very hard to stop. And he, that's the pass from Quinton Pongia. That was a cracker. Front rowers are playing so well, and Stacey saw out wide. They were short on numbers. That pass there from Matthew Rich, well, it looked to be a little bit forward. 
But anyway, doesn't matter because John Tim is playing to the ref. And the referee said that's a try. That's a good one. Yeah, John Timu. He had uh, Richard Barnett, of course, on the outside, unmarked, but he knew he had the momentum to get across the line. And that's the distance for Matthew Ridge. He's about three metres in from the far touch. 50%, he has one from two. Conversion attempt by Ridge. It's a good one. So it's 16 points to two. New Zealand in front. Time siren sounds, and that's the end of the first 40 here at the Rotorua International Stadium. A try to Barnett, Eru, and Timo Ridge has two conversions, just the two points to PNG. Penalty to Robert Teller. The front stays are within two points of uh, the New Zealanders, but now at half time they go to the break, and it is New Zealand leading 16 points to two. We'll be back with all the first half highlights right after this. Didn't have a chance to have a warm up match, and even referees like to have a bit of a warm up. The restart, second half underway, and that is a mistake by the PNG Kumbles right from the kickoff. They've allowed the ball to go dead, and so it's going to be a goal mouth dropout. Well, let's have a look at it on the CRC replay. Well, they claim that the Papua New Guinea players are claiming that. Oh. Nothing wrong with that. It no. bounced in the in goal area and went over the dead ball line. And replays so don't lie. The second half. Replays don't lie, do they? And so there's more pressure on the on the Kumbles. Okay, now it's Stacey Jones. We'll get a comment from the Kumble camp before too long. We'll just stay with the action for a moment to see whether the Kiwis can really ram home the advantage now that they have this good field position early in the second half. It's Tyron Smith right in front of the uprights. He's 15 metres out. Eru is back on, he had a bit of a spell in the first half, and now it's Grant Young. Young storming onto it, and almost across for a try on debut. At dummy half, it's Eru, and the penalty goes to PNG. So after that great run by Grant Young, he undid all the good that he had achieved by not playing the ball correctly. Let's go to the sideline now, and Phil Leishman is with the coach of the PNG Kumbles, Bob Bennett. Yeah, Bob, what were you saying to the team at halftime? Oh, we're just not going forward. I mean, we're being turned around in attack and with their heavy defence up the middle. We're just not going anywhere, so we've got to look at... Oh, and we've just dropped the ball now, so, I mean, we're just not going there at the moment. Yeah, is it uh, pretty hard to motivate the uh, team at the moment or not? I mean, that's not a bad scoreline to be down all the same, is it? Yeah, but the way we're going at the moment, we're going to be down a lot worse very shortly. We don't improve our standards of play and we're just dropping too much ball at the moment, making too many mistakes, and we're not running the ball out of our try line. That's your, the problem. Your players do seem very committed, though. Yeah, they're committed in defence. Great defence. I mean, New Zealand should, of course, score a lot more tries, and the defence has been great, but we're just not committed as far as getting the ball off our try line. Uh, well, let's hope things improve for you in the, uh, in the latter stages. Thanks, sir. Now it is uh, the Kiwis again through Matthew Ridge. So Bob Bennett has problems with his team. They're out there defending their try line yet again. Sid Eru at dummy half. Now it is Jones. Jones looking for the runners on the inside. He finds Quentin Pongia back. It goes to Grant Young. Young steps, but he runs into a bit of traffic around the ruck there. 16 points to two it is. The Kiwis over the Kumuls, and now it is Jones. Jones to Namu. Namu finds Richie Blackmore. He's had a quite game so far. Blackmore, he needs to conject himself. And now he throws the overhead pass, and it's been picked up by the Kumuls, but it was into touch, first of all. So a scrappy passage of play over there on the far side. There we see Mark Ellis waiting to get on the field there. Of course, he'd be biting to get out there because he's a tremendous attacking player, Mark. But the Kumuls at the moment, really... Their own worst enemies. They've got to hold on to that bill. Bob Bennett said it. They've got to go forward. And they've got to do those little things and really play mistake-free football. So it's the Kumuls inside their own red zone. That's inside their own 20-metre mark. And it's a captain, Mando. Three Kiwi defenders in there on him. They keep working the short side. Mum, the halfback, he needs to really look for the runners coming off him more in the second half as well. He needs to do a lot of talking, that little number seven, former Australian schoolboys captain, so he should be a pretty good talker out there. This is Mamendo. Got a great ball away, but the pass went to ground. Simon Kundi knocked it on. 
and this is one thing the PNG side well they don't have to play catch up football just yet but they are trying to push that pass early on and really they're in their own half they shouldn't be trying to, to do that unless it is 100% on Namu Blackmore Richie Blackmore trying to steamroll his way over the top of Marcus By. Hoppy from dummy half. He picks up a good 10 metres before offloading. He finds Mark Horro. The veteran lock bounces out of a few tackles. He's 10 metres out from the line. Yet again, it's the Kiwis on hot attack. Now it's Kearney to Jones. Jones, Namu, great ball to Ridge. Numbers here. Timu's got a double. John Timu scores his second try for the match. New Zealand's fourth try, they've hit the 20 mark, it's 20 points to two. Through the hands, and they had the overlap. Yes, the CRC replay will show that the Kiwi just working it to the centre, and just the numbers out wide, stringing those passes together. Stacey Jones and Matthew Ridge once again involved in setting up a try. Beautiful pass from Matthew Ridge. And John Timmy goes up for quite an easy try for the Kiwis. Just have a look here, the defence from the... Papua New Guinea is sliding across, but out wide there seems to always be gaps in the Papua New Guinea defence. Gene Namu passes it on to Rich, who then moves it on to Timu, who goes in for, as I said, an easy one, but I'm sure the Papua New Guineans won't be happy with that. Just haven't got the numbers out wide. They get a little bit frustrated, and they move up too quick sometimes. And really, they should be numbering up there, and there should be someone on John, but there wasn't. Difficult conversion attempt for Rich. A couple of metres in from the broadcast touch. In brilliant sunshine. No real breeze to contend with. And swings it around brilliantly. Great kick. 22 points to two. It is New Zealand over PNG. Here at the Rotorua International Stadium. Tackle number two for the Kumuls. Again, they're inside their own 20 metre mark. So now, will the floodgates open? Will New Zealand run away with this one? Let's get another comment from former Kiwi skipper Dwayne Mann. Yeah, well, I guess what Bob Bennett was alluding to, the fact that the, the Kumuls are really struggling to go forward if they continue to pass the ball behind the advantage line. Uh, they, they really need to just someone tuck it under their arm and go forward straight off the ruck. And we haven't really seen too much flair from their backs, Dwayne, have we? No, well, and uh, I guess that's another key to it, that you, you can't go around the side unless you're willing to go through the middle first, and, and that's what the Kiwis are doing in, in scoring that spectacular try out wide to John Timu. And a knock-on here. The scrum will pack down about 15 metres inside the Kumuls' territory, and the Kiwis will get the feed into the scrum. So again, they're just giving up possession, the PNG side. Well, they're giving up possession also. They're in their own half. I mean, you know, they've got to just settle down, work it out with their forwards, as Dwayne said, hit that advantage line and get in a good kick and chase. They're not doing that, so they're playing into the Kiwis' hands because the Kiwis now are attacking the Kumuls on the first tackle in the Kumuls' own half. This is Richie Barnett. Scored the first try in this match. Timu at dummy half. Now it's Horro. The 20 metre mark. Eru waits for it at dummy half. Jones. Brings Kearney on the inside. Kearney was taken ball along a good tackle by the fullback up off the defensive line. Robert Seo. Switch of play. Namu. Inside it goes to Ridge. Ridge with the kick into the in goal area. He has to chase it himself and it's over the dead ball line. So we will have a it was touched by PNG. So it's a goal mouth dropout. So good pressure by Matthew Ridge and the PNG player. I don't know whether he really had to play at that one let's have another look at it yeah the Kiwis also trying to attack down the center of the ruck there those little cross passes behind the ruck trying to catch the markers out napping because the Papua New Guinea markers aren't chasing but good work from Matthew Ridge and put more pressure on the Papua New Guinea side I just wonder how long they can handle this down here I think New Zealand will go for another try very soon Blackmore bounced out of one got the fen going making plenty of stopping Richie Blackmore so they set themselves for another raid. That was good work by the marker, though. Robert Seo. Sidero trying to get up and play the ball. Took a while. Now it's Young. Grant Young. Great ball out the back. They've got numbers over here, too. Namu won't need them. Through the gap. Another try to the New Zealand Kiwis. Gene Namu gets the four pointer. 26 to 2.
Yes, put that try down to, to Grant Young there, the big front row. I've been giving him raps all day, but he's having a blinder out there on the CRC replay. He takes the ball up now. Just watch him upload here in traffic. Nice little pass there. Of course, the Kiwi's able to go on with the Gene Nam, who spotted the gap. Nice little dummy from Gene. But really, the defence from the Papua New Guinea is just non-existent out wide now. They just seem to have to be short on the numbers. As we see Big Grant Young, he draws in three or four defenders and gets that little offload to Stacey. Now, that's what Stacey's going to do. He's got to back up guys like Iro and Grant Young all day because they'll make the ball available to them. Available to them. And, of course, Gene Nam, who spots that gap out wide, it was always on. And really, the Papua New Guinea defence, the, the Kiwis are drawing them into the middle of the rucks very well. Look, there's four players there, four Papua New Guinea players, so there's got to be holes out wide. Of course, Gene Namu spotted that. He goes over for a well-deserved try, and a very easy one, really. That's, that's no, for Gene, it's very, very easy. Matthew Rich with the conversion attempt. It's there, so it's 28 points to two. Welcome back to two sports action. 26 points in it from the kickoff. The NG player tackled about five metres out from his own line. And he came off second best. There's big Joe Pagana there. Head to head. Of course, Joe came off on top there. But I just wonder if I've got a criticism about this kickoff rule when the opposition side scores a try is that sometimes as a team if you're getting try scored against you and getting the ball kicked back down to you you seem as though you're working your ball out of your own 22 all the time and it can be a little bit frustrating at least if you get the kickoff you can have the kiwis down in their own 22 and maybe cause an upset mistake the big joe there gee, that was a, a clash and i think he hurt himself more when he hit the ground with joe falling on top of him well pound for pound you're always going to back uh, joe vangana aren't you well, and Joe, Joe Wagner, Greg, had been uh, waiting here for some time to get on. He's pretty keen to go, I must admit. He uh, replaced Grant Young, who came off uh, after that uh, very impressive move. Reuben Wickey is also on for Mark Horo. Phil Leishman keeping in touch with the interchange, playing under Super League rules. It's not unlimited interchange. They can only make six changes. Mixed tackles will PNG have fallen off 16. That's uh, three to one, and it's not good. Kumal player down injured. Certainly taking plenty of time to respond to some treatment. Joe Vangana really polaxed him. Vangana on debut, so he'll remember his start to a test match. <laughs> of course, Frey got making quite a few changes out there. Gee, I hope Mark Ellis gets out because the Kiwis will win this game. And it'd just be great to see him get out there for his first test for the Kiwis. Well, Simon Kundi is being replaced after that heavy tackle by Joe Vangana and so we're back into it again. Michael Ungra is the replacement for Papua New Guinea. Michael Ungra from the uh, Highlands region. And this is where the Kiwis really are going in the twos and threes and just slowing the play down, lying all over the, the Papua New Guinea players. I'm sure Papua New Guinea were getting very frustrated because the defence of the Kiwis is very good. Almost an intercept there. And just see how quick they're moving off the line, the Kiwi side. They're sprinting off the line in that first 10 metres and it's stopping. Papua New Guinea crossing the advantage line. Frank Indica told us before the match in his pre-match comment that they were firing up, fired up and raring to go. I know most coaches say that, but I think uh, Frank had a uh, good reason for it. Been bursting under their skin this week, some of these players, after missing four or five weeks of football, couldn't wait to get into it. Feel the combination starting to work pretty well now. There's a penalty. So PNG really have to control things now settle things down i'm sure there'll be a few bruised and sore bodies tomorrow too having not played for some time it's been a pretty bruising encounter with the especially in the fours the Papua guineans are very tough very strong as we see here just being held down too long once again well for all of the second half so far it's been png defending their own territory joe Bangana. Joe loses his uh, footing. He's 18 metres out from the line. Jones, no shortage of runners. Pongia, good ball up to Ruben Wickey, his Canberra teammate. He's pulled down about eight metres out from the line. Jones a dummy half. Now it's Namu. And Tyron Smith ranging wide. Got away from one. Got away from two. What a try! On debut, Tyron Smith gets a try. Pretty ordinary defence by the Kumals. 
but he was full of running 32 now yes i said once the kiwis got on top here they'll probably run away at this game they're certainly doing that and the good thing about the new zealand side is they're moving the ball to the center of the field and it gives the halves options they can go either way and of course when you've got players like this who are prepared to burst onto the ball tyron smith showed a lot of pace a lot of power didn't he out wide he's a rangy sort of a player and uh he's going to cause a lot of problems out there he can also offload a good ball but running off gene namu the puck new gideon's really falling off the tackles left right and center now so they'll be looking forward for the final whistle but there's still a fair while to go and i'm sure we're going to see quite a few tries the biggest winning margin by new zealand over png was 66 to 10 56 points difference back in 1992 at carlo i know the kimmels won't want another repeat of that rich trying to add another two this time he's hooking around to the left so it's 32 points to two six tries to none 30 points the difference second tackle coming up now for the kumals they're about five from halfway after the kiwis tried the short kickoff obert batia Pio waits for the dummy half and if you watch the kumals when they take it up too a lot of them they lead with their head because they've got very very hard heads and you'd probably come off second best if you had a clash with them now it's mom he finds nandy year lacking a bit of spark at the moment the kumals maybe some of the backs have got something in store but no this time the kick goes straight into the arms of the winger help sean here, hoppy help here. and really that's all they've got is that kick in behind the line because they can't break the kiwis line it's rock solid so they're gonna have to put those little options into their game the kumals rich standing and eventually taking the tackle the kumals best play is to keep the ball alive and I think in this game today, we've probably seen them taking it up the middle of the park a little bit too much, really playing into the hands of the, the Kiwi forwards who are pretty fired up for today. For this test of five tests. And then we saw a spare tackle on Matthew Rich. That's something that the Kumals are known for. The first one today, the referee's cracked right down on it. It's a very dangerous tackle. He shouldn't be allowed to get away with it. Joe Bungana making plenty of stopping. 20 meter mark. Arrow from dummy half, his Warriors teammate. And Joe Wagner, he's a man, the inside backs ought to be chasing up for the whole of the second half. He goes Steve Kearney. Kearney, getting close. Kearney just, <laughs> well, he just seemed to walk across the line, didn't he? <laughs> in for the try between the sticks. Another four points with an easy conversion still to come. Seven tries to done now. They're on the rampage now. Yes, and I think really the New Zealand side, the big thing is they're enjoying themselves out there. Have a look on the CRC replay there. Steve Kearney now. The Papua New Guineans can't tackle him. I think he has a go at the ref, or looks as though the ref's going to try. Just have a look there. The ref was <laughs> going to try and tackle him too, just about. But Steve said, get out of my road. I'm going over for my first try today. And goal kickers love it. <laughs> right, right there, right in front. There's the extra two. 38 points to two. So Matthew Ridge adds the extras. Yes, yeah, good work from Steve Kearney there out wide. Well, Matthew Ridge is having a bit of a spell. The Kiwi captain, Frank Endicott, obviously thinks he's done enough. He's had a pretty hard week, Matthew Ridge, with the celebrations in the Manly camp. But now we see Mark Ellis making his debut, and he'll play at fullback. Mark Ellis, a fairly confident goal kicker as well. There's not, not much loss there, really, when you think about it. Mark Ellis, he's an exciting player. He's a good talker as well. He's had a year's experience with the Warriors, so I'm just pleased to see him out there playing for New Zealand. He'll be pretty keen to get into the action as well. Dan again. Inside pass. Well, they've lost it again, the Kermals. Things just not going right for them. I know there's been a question mark on whether or not they can perform away from home, out of their own environment, away from their passionate fans. 
passionate fans, I'd say they're more than that. <laughs> Dangerous fans sometimes. But it is very hot over there and teams struggle. But as you said, away from home, they're not that flash, are they? As you can see, Greg, Mark Horo is on the field replacing Sid Aero, who's on the bench at the moment. So Frank Endicott must be getting pretty close to using up his six interchanges, giving everyone a run in this test match. So look ahead to next Friday night, the test match at Palmerston North, and Stacey Jones turns it inside to Blackmore. Well, he seemed to snatch at that one in two minds as to whether he was going to get the ball or not. And so the scrum's going to pack down about 15 metres out from the PNG line. Yeah, Stacey just running across, looking for those inside runners because it is pretty hard to defend against if you've got a guy angling back. Just couldn't connect with Richie there. So PNG will be very keen to get Adrian Lamb. Queensland State of Origin halfback and also David Wesley from the Canberra Raiders back into the starting lineup for the second test. That's the 20 metre mark. Down to Guinea. Big defence there from Ruben Wiki. I know the Canberra guys, the Canberra Raiders team players, tell me that he's one of the best defenders they've seen out in the centres. They rate him as one of the best, and that's a big rap from those guys, and he's certainly shown that out there today. There's a little knock on in there by the Kumbles. It's not going their way. And Frank Endicott, I know, is pretty keen on Ruben Wiki. Uh, using him on the bench, probably good enough to be in the starting 13, but he can now come on and play in the forwards as well. And is that a sign of the times or is it a sign of uh, future things to come as we see the little knock on there on the CRC replay? Well, he's such a solid player, isn't he, Ruben Wiki? He's one of the guys who can, you can put anywhere, I suppose, because uh, he loves being out in the centres and he's a great defender and attacking player. But very well suited on the on the back of the scrub if your forwards are going forward. Now it is Mark Horro. We're going to report on Matthew Rich pretty soon, but uh, we'll stay with the action here as the Kiwis work themselves into a very good attacking position. It is Jones showing the ball out to Vagana. Big Joe pops it out the back door. The bounce is there for Stephen Kearney. Kearney trying to turn and wriggle his way. Over the top it goes. Hoppy! Hoppy gets the try. And he'll run it around and put it down between the sticks, making it a lot easier for the goal kicker. So they've hit the 40 mark now. It's 42 points to two. And put that one down to some pretty good work by Stephen Kearney. Yes, and also some pretty poor defence from Papua New Guinea. Really, they're just dropping off the tackles. If you have a look on the CRC replay, he's running good angles and having good decoy runners, but just watch here. Bagana pops it out. Now, Steve Kearney takes it. And he sort of goes 10 or so metres of just brushing players off. And it gets in a very good pass, though, out wide. And they're backing Stephen up. And that's what they've got to do if they're going to be competitive, the New Zealand side. They certainly are doing that. And Sean Hoppe is on the end of it. But just look at the tackling there. It, it is very, very poor and very, very weak. It is Gene Namu who is taking over the kicking duties. He adds the extra two. New Zealand 44, PNG 2. Returning the football from the kickoff. Well, can they get a consolation try now? Can we see them turn on a bit of flair? I doubt it. I'm sure that the, the New Zealanders will not want them to score. You know, they'll be working on their defensive patterns. and They'll be using these two games against Papua New Guinea as real big build-ups to Great Britain, of course. Great Britain will be a lot more competitive than this. Let's go sideline now to our team and see if we can get a report on Matthew Ridge. He looked to be okay when he walked off, Phil. What's the yeah, story? But funnily enough, I would have had to be about 50 metres down the road to catch him. He's on his way for an X-ray. He's wrenched his knee and they were a little concerned, so they've sent him down for a quick X-ray. So you won't be seeing Matthew again today, but he's made a bit of an, a big impression. Another change. Kearney is off. Tony Eero is on. Okay, so that must be about the six now. Six interchanges for the Kiwis in Hoppy, the try score up over halfway, playing with plenty of confidence nowadays, Sean Hoppy. I mean, he'll be the first to admit that 96 wasn't his greatest year, but he's finishing with a flourish. Such a fine player, even when he's out of form, he can still do wonderful things. Well, I think the thing out there, which is showing with this New Zealand side, is they love playing for New Zealand, these guys. They all get on so well. There's no bad apples amongst them. They all seem to have great team spirit, and it's showing out there on the field. Namu, out to Timu. John Timu has a double already. Three individuals have scored plenty of tries against PNG. Six by Hume again in 1983. Three by Richie Blackmore in 1992. Now this is 
Ruben Wiki, who's going to play it on the final tackle. Namu, not a great pass. He was under a bit of pressure, and Jones is there, but there was a little knock on, so it'll be a handover to the Papua New Guinea Kumuls on their 20 metre mark. Trying a quick play the ball to catch the Kiwis napping. They're inside the 10, so they'll get a penalty now. And Mark Bum will kick for the far touch. A few things going against the Kiwis, but have been impressed in the second half, particularly with the support play of the Kiwi side. And they were hitting the ball up pretty well in the first half, softening up the Papua New Guinea. Support play has been brilliant. And just have a look at the runners as Tony Iroh gets out wide in the second half because he rebels in these sort of conditions where players are, are really hanging off in the tackle. Yes, I think Johnny needs those. He needs players running off him. I'm sure they'll do that because it's a funny feeling when you're winning like this in a test match. All you think about is maybe you can score that try, get out there and score a try. And uh, I'm sure a lot of the players will really, they're a little not selfish, but really be, when they're on attack near the line, will be busting to get that ball to go over because it is quite easy, it looks, to score a try. Yeah, just the kind of game that'll probably look for a try. <laughs> Something never happened to me, Curtis. I was never a selfish player, though. I'd always try and set them up. Michael Angra plays it. They go to the short side. There's a little rubber kick by Getty. And Mark Ellis has it. First touch. And test football. And he's dropped it. They'll pack the scrum down. Well, he was looking to offload there because there was a player behind him. I think Joe Vagana was there. He was looking, but just couldn't connect and just knocked out. It was Sean Hoppy, sorry. Well, was that knocked out of his hands? He lost control of it, it was the call, and so the scrum packs down. Mom, he nearly knocked it on. Now it's Ganny, trying to step his way through. Smith was there to help Gene Namu. Eight metres out, best attacking opportunity in the second half for the Kumbles, and Mamando is driven back. That's his Canberra teammate again. Ruben Wicking with doing the tackling. The short side they go, and Elias Pio held up. They've been impressive on defence today, the Kiwis. Can they hold the Kumbles out this time? It's Bomb with the long ball out to Genny. Genny has CO up from fullback, and Robert CO is taken by Tony Iro out wide. They continue to work it to the, ha the uh, dummy half, and now this is Obert Bartia. Right in front of the uprights, final tackle. Do they go to the air? Do they put it in behind the line? Do they put it through the hands? It's Mum. Mark Mum trying to step his way through, but he's been crunched over there by Joe Bungano. And that, again, is a very good defensive set of six by the New Zealand Kiwis. They have the game well and truly wrapped up, 44-2. to two. Yes, yeah, so they look a little bit lost, though, don't they, the Papua New Guineans? No one in the directing traffic and not too many options near the line. They're just going one up. So have a look at the territory. New Zealand 65, Papua New Guinea 35. Well, it shows on the scoreboard, doesn't it? New Zealand have had all the ball all game, but they really are missing those key players in, in key positions, the, the Kumuls. And as you said, Adrian Lamb, uh, he, he is missed out there. And David Wesley, there's a loose pass, and it's been picked up by the Kumuls. So they have pretty good field position again. 30 metres out from the New Zealand line. 12 minutes remaining in this match, live on two sports action. Don't forget, we're with you again next Friday night from 9.30, the second test at the Palmerston North Showgrounds. Now a mistake by the Kumbles, and Jones managed to find some open spaces. The cover is there to shut the movement down. Ruben Wicky allowed to offload. Ellis. Nabu, long ball out to Timu, he has to cut back in field, looking for a gap. He's tackled about 38 metres out from the PNG line. Now it's Hoppy and Iro. long ball out to Smith, Smith to Barnett, Barnett for the corner, he's got CO to beat, no problems for Richie Barnett. He scored the first try of this match and now he's got a double between the sticks. Again, poor defence by the Kumbles, and they're nearing the half century. Well, great work from the Kiwis out wide here. Tyron Smith ranging out wide, put up a good ball. Once again, they move to the middle of the field, the Kiwis. It gives them options either side. And of course, they seem to be picking the right side, but just watch Richard Barnett sandwich between the two Puff New Guinea players. And of course, goes over for a good try, but the defence is just non-existent out there. And 
those two players really should have taken Richard, but uh, he sliced them. Third test for Barnett. From right in front, it is Gene Namu. He adds the extras. The half century has been reached. It's 50 points to two. Well, Brent Todd, some pretty impressive performances out there for New Zealand today at the end of the match. Phil Leishman will be giving away another $500 compliments of CRC for our New Zealand man of the match. A tough one today. Maybe Richie Barnett could be up there with the front runners. Well, there has been. It's been a, an all-round display. I think both of the team should really get it because it's been a confident display out there from the Kiwis. Their coach Frank Hindicott will be very, very impressed. But I've been actually disappointed with Papua New Guinea. I just think they've offered nothing today. They've, on attack, they've been very, very poor. And on defence, very, very soft. They are missing out on a few fundamentals, aren't they? Their kicking game hasn't been on. They don't finish off their set of six. And in defence, they really aren't drifting. They've got the men there a lot of the time. But uh, too often, one man's coming out of the line early. Now, Kurt, I'd like an opinion from you. Brent Todd said the uh, CRC $500 man of the match money should go to the team when brent todd won uh, those awards back in the early eight and 90s um was he sharing <laughs> <laughs> well i don't think it usually happens that way of course i do here's a chance though let's get back to the football and this could be the try the bmg kubels are waiting for there it is oh we said they would probably score the most spectacular try well <laughs> elias Pio has done it <laughs> what a way to finish it Oh, just imagine if he had dropped the ball <laughs> doing the forward roll, but the CRC replay will show out wide. Papua New Guinea, well, they found a gap in this great defence of the New Zealand side and kept the ball alive, just throwing it over their heads. They are exciting players. Now, Mark Ellis does a desperate dive to try and stop this drive, but I've got to see that forward roll once again. Here we go. Over it. <laughs> <laughs> 10 out of 10 we'll give him <laughs> I haven't seen a try like that for a long time once again head on we'll see it live on two sports action it's a forward roll with a try well sensational Clarkie <laughs> Elias Payo who plays in the Queen Beanne district <laughs> rugby league competition that's uh, near Canberra of course something for the crowd to here about and now this is Robert Teller with the conversion attempt he adds the two but they're still in single figures it's 50 points to eight now 50 to eight New Zealand over Papua New Guinea on the CRC replay this is a well-worked try Mom putting it through the hands to Stanley Guinea in a fine game at Carlo Park last Tuesday over it goes to Marcus by and Bai was able to get away here, or Huff got away, got the hands away, and the bounce was great. Have a look at this. He pinned his ears back. Now, Mark Ellis is a very fast man, and he just couldn't get there. Stanley Genny, the 5'8". I was just going to say, that just shows you how quick they are, these guys, if they get into open spaces. Very, very dangerous. Not only are they quick, they're entertainers and gymnasts as well. Now it is the Kiwis. Second tackle after the kickoff. And it's Horro, Mark Horro, chased and driven into the ground. Nine from halfway. Well, I wonder if we can see another one of those. Entertaining stuff, and now it's Blackmore pushing out of the couple. And that's really been the story of the game, hasn't it? Three tackles, they're 10 yards into uh, opposition territory. It's pretty easy stuff, making big yards. Yes, and I'm sure the Kiwis would have liked to have them not score against them. But when you see tries like that... I guess you've always got to have something to work on for the uh, for the next game, Brent. Well, they've got plenty to work on the Pope New Guinea side. Kick from Namu. Who wants it? Barnett does. Over it goes to Timu. That was well picked up. Has he got his hat trick? Try. And well, John.
Johnny Timu's not too happy about it. Well, let's have a look on the CRC replay. It'll show us. Did he go in for his hat trick here? Nice little footwork there from John Timu, this Timu the speedster. Does he get that ball down before he goes there? That is a try. That is a fair try. Timu should have a hat trick. So the scoreline remains 50 points to eight. Pio, the try scorer. 18 metres out from the Kumbles line. Now this is Ben Berry. Pio, a dummy half to Mark Bomb. Kenny, bye. Well, that's a sloppy pass again, and there's trouble here for the Kumbles. There's a knock-on in there. They really haven't sparked at all today, the Kumbles. Handing over the football. And now it is Pongia still going strong. Fine game, but back inside it goes to Wiki, who says, get out of the way. He was like a steamroller. Right over the top of them. And Wiki gets a try. 54 points to six. Yes, yeah, good work here from Quinton Pongia, the big front rower. He's had a strong game, taking the ball in. Nice little offload to his Canberra teammate, <laughs> Ruben Wiki. <laughs> he just they had no defence really, and he's so strong, Ruben, close to the line. Very solid player, but nice little step and good ball skills from Quinton Pongia. Get out of my road, Ruben says. I'm going over for a try. It's his first of the game. Ruben Wiki. He started on the reserves bench in his eighth match. Showed his versatility. He's come on not as a back, but as a forward. Now then. Another two points to the telly, so it's 56 points to eight. New Zealand over the Kumbles. And still time on the clock for more action here on TV2. Try scorer, Ruben Wiki. Don't forget at the end of the match, we have our CRC New Zealand man of the match. Very tough decision today. Yes, it's been a tough one for me to make, but I think I'll make the right choice in the end, Greg. Although you'll probably disagree with me. We'll have that for you at the end. We'll also have uh, coverage details of the upcoming test matches on TV2. Mr. North next Friday night. Then it's the Great Britain Lions, the first test in Auckland, the second test back in Palmerston North, and the third test in Christchurch. You can guarantee it'll be sunshine down in Christchurch, but just thinking about next week's test with Papua New Guinea, I'm sure they'll come out and uh, have a lot more firepower and be a lot more competitive with Palmerston North. Of course, they always seem to play pretty well there. Visiting teams have had a pretty good record at Palmerston North. Now this is Joe Wagner. Some of these debutants in the New Zealand team. Pretty happy to get this one under their belt. I don't think they'll be swapping their jerseys at the end of it. Left-footed kick by Tony Oro. Showing some kicking skills. And Hoppy's charging through. And Robert Seo goes into touch. So good chasing by Sean Hoppy. But what about the left-footed kick by <laughs> Tony Oro? Well, he's got all the skills, hasn't he, Tony? Tony, he's a, he's a tremendous ball player and a great asset to the side, to the Kiwi side. I know he's been used a fair bit as an impact player, and I believe he should be out there in the starting lineup. And you know, the more or the longer he plays in the side, the better match fits he gets. Robert Wicky's got a double. As simple as that. 58 points to eight. Wicky, two tries in a matter of minutes. It smiles all round with Stephen Kearney. Grant Young, who's had a fine debut, is on the bench looking on as well. And players like Grant Young must think that this test football is pretty good. <laughs> well, dream start, Mark Ellis, Timu, Grant Young, CRC replay will show. This is the sort of football we like to see them play. It's been a tremendous effort from the New Zealand side. And of course, their coach, Frank Endicott, will be very happy. Things have gone to plan. They look like a very happy side to me. And they're playing like a side full of confidence. Ruben Wiki off the back there. He's so powerful and very hard to stop close to the line. But the defence also very poor once again. 
Well, having trouble keeping up with the uh, scoring <laughs> on a regular basis, they brought up the 60. 60 points to eight with this kick to come. Abu struck it pretty well. It's there, so 62 points to eight now. That's not their record win. Now the crowd is running on the field here at the Rotorua International Stadium. There's still some time on the clock. Well, the Jets is pretty keen to get some autographs, yes. I think they, the announcer was telling them to stay up. They all thought it was time to go on. Good on them. It's good to get out there and, and see all the heroes and get as many autographs as they can. And injury time now in the second half. Russell Smith just waiting for the crowd to leave. I guess the Kumbles will be pretty happy to call it short. Now, here is the restart, and it's a short one by Tony Iro, and, well, it was almost going to be gathered in by John Timu. It's not the first time they've tried that one, and it's uh, come off once or twice for them in the match. Bruce Mamendo, the skipper, well, he's really going to have to work overtime with his coach, Bob Bennett, this week to get the Kimmels back up and ready for the second test next Friday night. To get the Kimmels will be playing a match against the New Zealand Maori Nelson Park in Hastings on Tuesday afternoon. For everyone in the Hawks Bay, pop along and support the Maori team as they take on the Kimmels. The siren sounds here. It is full time and a very good win to the New Zealanders in their first test. Quite a few drop balls in the first half, but in the second half they seem to really get their combinations going. 62 points to eight. 